Hello Year 3 and welcome to today's history lesson. Today we are going to be doing some more work on the Romans and I know uh, you've already designed your Roman shield um, uh, in the first two days of school and then you have hopefully at home you've done your Roman timeline and today we're going to be looking about how the Roman Empire expanded. We are going to know by the end of the lesson if we look at our success criteria what the word conquer means. And uh, conquer, I think, might be a homophone, might it? It means two, two words that sound the same, which mean two different things. There might be a conquer, which you might be able to play with outside that might fall from a tree, or there might be this type of conquer, and we're going to learn what this type of conquer means. You are going to know how the Roman Empire expanded and how it got bigger, and you are going to understand why the Roman army was able to conquer different countries. So we're going to look at what strengths the Roman army had over others. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remind ourselves what we learned last week. So you are going to, um, I want you just to have a think to yourself or tell somebody that's there with you what the word republic means and what empire means. So if I'm saying that the Roman Empire expanded, what does that mean? And what does the word republic mean in relation to the Romans? So I'd like you to press pause on the video now, have a little think. You could write some notes yourself if you're on your own or have a chat to somebody who's there with you. Okay, so hopefully you've had a little think, and maybe, if you're lucky, you've had a discussion with somebody at home um, about what the word republic means. Now, republic means the, um, it means like a democracy. So the republic, the Roman Republic was one of the earliest forms of democracy that has ever kind of been around. And democracy is where we um, have a government, and there's a government that um, are responsible for the people that live within it, um, and at the moment we have Boris Johnson heading up our government and our republic and the government is voted for by a democracy. So democracy means that people is everybody has a say. So the republic was one of the earliest forms of somebody being in charge, but everyone having a say as to who that person was. The Roman Empire simply means all of the area of land and people that were governed and owned almost by Rome and so the Rome the Roman Empire would have started within Rome and as it's got bigger the Roman Empire has got bigger because Rome becomes responsible for and the Romans become responsible for a larger larger area so today we're going to be learning about how the Roman army conquered many pe many different places to expand get bigger the Roman Empire now there's that word conquer again um, there's the ver it's a verb Roman army conquered many different places. What I'd love for you to do is, if you've got a dictionary, is I'd love you to look up the word conquered in the dictionary and see if you can work out what it means. If you don't have a dictionary, um, you could Google the word conquered and see what comes up. You could look at it on a phone, it would come up. Or you could ask somebody there with you to see if you can come up with a definition for what we think the word conquered means. So, press pause, have a go, come back to me when you are done. Okay, so on my screen here, hopefully you can see that there um, is a dictionary definition of the word conquered. So I looked up conquered in the dictionary and it says that it is a place or people who have been overcome and taken control of by military force. So they've been taken control of and they're no longer their own. They've been over, they've been conquered, they've been taken over by somebody else using an army or using military force. So they've used an army or some kind of powerful force to take them over and they now have ownership of them. So this map here shows the land that the Roman Emperor conquered. So the areas in red or purple or pink maybe, the, the, the coloured areas show the parts of the world that the Roman Empire um, overtook and had control of. So there's lots of places that we might be able to spot here and that we might recognise from our continents uh, learning in term one. Firstly, we've got the majority of Europe has been taken over and is under um, Roman Empire control. We've also got the parts of Asia here and we've also got the northern parts of Africa who have been, um, who are under uh, Roman Empire control. So what do you think this tells us about the Roman army? I'm going to have a think for a minute. If I was a Roman, what does it tell us? I think it might tell me that the Roman army were pretty good at what they did. 
I think they are really extensive. If we think about Rome, and it started off here, and they've managed to take over all of this. And actually, what I think is quite impressive is that the Roman Empire have managed to cross oceans to take control as well. So it also tells me that they're probably very good sailors, that they're able to um, take over lots of different parts. And do you know what? Strangely, it reminds me of pirates a little bit, that they start in one place and they're able to travel the seas and they kind of, they just seem to be able to take what they want. I think the Romans, although they remind me of a pirate, I think that actually the way that they were organised in terms of an army would be probably a little bit different to pirates and how pirates would have operated. But it does definitely tell me that they were a powerful force that were able to travel great, great distances and after travelling great, great distances, use their military power to overtake whoever was living here. Because let's not forget, it wasn't just empty land. There would have been people living here that the Romans have managed to conquer, to take control of. So, the Roman army had the most disciplined and well-trained army, and a Roman soldier was known as a legionary. Let's do my turn, your turn for a legionary. 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 What item would a legionary in a Roman army need? Hmm. Have a think. Talk to someone at home with you. I'm going to pause the video when you've thought of something. What might they need to wear? Might they need to protect themselves? What might be useful? Have a chat. Press pause and press play when you're done. Okay, so I think that they would need lots of different things. They might need some armour. I think if you're travelling to lots of different countries and you're overtaking people with force, you are going to need some armour to keep yourself safe and keep yourself protected from any fights that you're going to have to get involved in. You're also, in that sense, going to need a sword for close contact, to close combat. Somebody in front of you, you might have to sword fight them. Uh, you might need a spear for people who are further away, or if you were on a horse, maybe a spear might be more useful. You're, of course, going to need a helmet because your head is the most important part of your body to try and protect. And when we were learning about the skeleton, we were learning about how important the skull is and the job it does in protecting our brain. And the helmet is just an additional... Um, uh, an additional example of protection for your brain and your head and of course a shield which was very important in keeping everybody safe because if you were an archer from the other team from the other side whoever was uh, fighting the roman empire um, and the roman army if you fired an arrow then uh, the roman soldiers could place their shield over their heads or across their body and protect themselves from any arrows that were coming from above them um, okay, just quickly moved out of the sun there. It was coming in so lovely and bright, but was stopping me being able to see what I was doing. So sorry about that. Um, so in order to become a legionary in the Roman army, a soldier would have to be able to do a large number of things. Firstly, he would be able to build camps because that would be important, wouldn't it? You'd be traveling for long periods and you'd have to be able to build a camp to have somewhere to stay. You would have to be able to swim. It'd be really important if you're traveling all these great distances on water and you're in wooden boats. If something happened to your boat, not going to be ideal if you can't swim. Also, when you're landing, you're going to have to be able to swim to shore because your boats, you're not going to put them right up onto the um, right up onto the beach. You're going to need to have a bit of distance there where you're able to swim. You're going to be able to sling stones and you're going to be able to ride horses. You are going to need to train because you're going to need to carry all your heavy armour. So you are expected to march 30 kilometres three times a month. So the distance from, um, the, from the toilets, from the boys' toilets in the year three corridor, um, the main corridor where we go out and the main boys' and girls' toilets are, um, that entrance onto the playground there all the way up to the top tarmac and all the way back is one kilometer. So if you traveled one kilometer, that would be one kilometer and you've got to do 30. So you'd have to do that 60 times and you'd have to do that with 20 kilograms on your back, which is the same as a bag of flour or a bag of sugar 20 times. So you'd have to do that with 20 bags of sugar or 20 bags of flour on your back, which sounds very heavy. 
um, you are going to be able to learn how to use a sword and a spear and you're going to fight and practice fighting with mock battles. So you're going to practice fighting with your friends and your comrades and other people in the army to see if you would be able to survive and practice those skills that you're going to need as a Roman, as a soldier in the Roman army. Would you then, knowing all of this, would you have joined the Roman army? If you would, think about what the benefits might be. And if you wouldn't, think about why you wouldn't. What, what, what could the Roman army offer you that would make you want to join? Have a chat to somebody at home or have a little think yourself. Okay, so having made a decision, are you pro-Roman army or are you mm -mm, not for me? Me, myself, right now, I'm thinking that is a lot to do. I'd be away from my family for a long time. I'd be expected to be really physical. But at the same time, it'd be really good for your health, wouldn't it? You'd probably be really healthy, doing lots of exercise. You'd be really strong. Um, and also, you'd probably feel really great. You'd probably feel like you're making a difference to your country. And you'd probably feel like a lot of people respected you. So I'm 50-50 at the minute. I would be interested to know what the rewards and punishments might be. So let's have a look at those. If you left your post or you fell asleep on the job, you'd be killed. Doesn't sound so great. I'm very sleepy. I probably would fall asleep at my post. And if you consider that as a Roman officer, as a legionary, you've probably travelled really far distances. And then if you have travelled really far and you've not slept really well and you're probably a bit hungry and then you're expected to be on post, it's very likely that you would fall asleep. Or perhaps you would leave your post to go and get food or to go and do something. And if you were caught doing that, then unfortunately that would be the end of your life. You'd be killed, which seems like a very strict punishment, which is why discipline, why we're saying that discipline was so harsh in the Roman army. So I guess it would be a really good way of keeping everybody on track. If you were so scared to do something wrong because you'd be killed, you'd definitely do the right thing, wouldn't you? Can you imagine if Mr Stokes said, any teachers to step out of line? <laughs> I think we'd all be doing what we should be doing, wouldn't we? However, on the other side, if you worked hard, then you would be rewarded with great riches. You'd be given medals, you'd be given gold crowns and silver spears, and you'd be able to move up. So you'd be able to move up the Roman army, getting closer and closer to the top, which really, when you're a grown up, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to get better and better and better at your job. And so, Although the punishments are really hard, the rewards are really great. So I'm still 50-50 about whether it's something I'd want to do or not. So what you are going to do is you're going to try and convince me. You are going to put a job advert up for a Roman legionary. You are going to have a look at these two job adverts here as really good examples of what a job advert does. Because I understand not many of you have applied for jobs, I shouldn't think, at this point in your life. So... For a really successful job advert, the first part is that you need to put a job title. And your job title, these are two examples for pirates, that your first job title might be captain or it could be quartermaster. The job title that you're going to be asking us to fill is legionary in the Roman army. So the duties, the main duties of a quartermaster are to assist the captain in the daily duties as well as being prepared to act up as captain. So they're like a deputy. They're a bit like Mrs Andrews is to Mr Stokes. And here we've got captain's duties are to run the ship and to organise the missions. So that's Mr Stokes' position, isn't it? You must be, I want to know the qualities that you must have to be really good at your job. So to be captain of a pirate ship, you must be a leader of others and be able to make decisions. You must be able to apply and complete an application form. This one, for the quartermaster, you must be able to assist the captain in the daily duties and act up on captain, but you must have these qualities. You must be dedicated and you must be able to lead others. So that tells me that for both those positions, I need to be quite strong as a person. What you're going to think about is for your Roman legionary position, you are going to look back at these um, these duties, these are your main duties, that you'll need to build camps, you'll need to be able to swim, you'll be able to need to sling stones, ride horses, you're going to need to be able to march 30 metres, 30 kilometres, sorry, 
three times a month, we're in the 20 kilometers, uh, 20 kilograms, sorry. And you're going to learn how to use a sword and a spear and fight in mock battles. These are your duties. These are the expectations that will be, if you were successful in the role, we'd expect you to do this. You may, in the second part, you will look to, um, under your must be section, what kind of character are you going to be? You're going to be somebody who isn't lazy. You're going to be not somebody who falls asleep on the job. You're going to be somebody who is dedicated. You're going to be someone who's passionate about the Roman army. And all of these different attributes that you might be have, which would make you a good Roman legionary. So we're looking here about your personality and what personality traits you might have, which would make you a really good soldier in the Roman army. And here is a little breakdown for you, just to make it really simple, in that you need to put your job title, which would be legionary. Check your spelling on legionary. Duties, what the main duties are. And remember that we go back to the previous slide, so you can rewind the video and you can pause on that slide. Or you might have it in your home learning packs. We did pop it on there for you that they need to be able to walk the certain distance. They need to be able to fight in mock battles. All the different things that they'd be expected to do. And then the must be is really using your imagination to think about the personal character traits. The personality that a Roman soldier would need to have. Once you've done that, as always, I'd love, love, love to see it. We'll be doing shout outs for the best examples that we get. And also shout outs for those of you that have just tried really, really hard. You might want to make your job advert a little bit more interesting by decorating your page with um, uh, lots of pictures of helmets and shields and all the different kind of things you could do. It, you could decorate it with the benefits of being a Roman legionary, which would be gold coins and uh, gold crowns and uh, medals and all the things that you would gain um, and you might also want to draw a picture of the Roman Empire you might want to expand it by telling me how amazing the Roman Empire is by saying you want to you definitely want to work for the Roman Empire because we have managed to conquer all of these places we're amazing sailors all the different things that you are so have fun with this it's supposed to be fun I hope you do find it fun and as ever any problems questions let me know I'd love to see how you do and what you get up to as would all of the other teachers because we are missing you so very much we will see you soon